Patient expectations for cataract surgery have increased dramatically over the past several years. Those who choose a premium IOL tend to have especially high vision expectations, and the array of advanced technology lenses available today gives us, in many cases, a variety of ways to deliver on patients' desired refractive outcomes. Beyond lens selection and surgical planning, there are many intraoperative steps we can take to help maximize surgical success with premium lenses. This case will illustrate how careful attention to surgical technique and postoperative management, including drug selection, can help us deliver excellent outcomes with advanced technology IOLs. A 49-year-old patient presented to our clinic seeking cataract surgery. She had undergone RK many years previously and was left with some residual corneal astigmatism. She now had 2060 best corrected vision with 2 plus nuclear sclerosis and 2 plus posterior subcapsular cataract. Her corneal astigmatism measured approximately 1.5 diopters. This relatively young patient was highly motivated to reduce her reliance on spectacles. So in order to correct her pre-existing astigmatism and give her the opportunity to achieve excellent vision at a range of distances, I recommended the TrueLine Toric IOL. The TrueLine Toric IOL is a silicone lens with a 5 mm optic, two flexible rectangular hinged haptics, and four polyamide loops. It is a toric modification of the Crystal Lens AO with the addition of a toric optic on the posterior surface and two alignment marks on the anterior surface. The TrueLine IOL offers patients a greater range of vision from distance to near and can correct up to two and a half diopters of corneal astigmatism. The lens is a good option for this patient since its aspheric optics are associated with a low risk of unwanted glare, halo, or reduced contrast sensitivity. Based on preoperative measurements and calculations, we plan to implant a 20 diopter TrueLine lens, calculated using the Holiday 2 formula, with a plus 2 diopter cylinder power for this post RK patient. I first marked the surface of the eye for the steep axis with the Whitman Toric axis marker made by Stores. The long radial marks in the mid peripheral cornea help ensure proper lens placement orientation for precise astigmatism correction. I used the Victus femtosecond laser to make the 5.6 millimeter capsulotomy, and you can see how easy this free cap is to remove. A symmetrical and well-centered capsularexis is extremely important for precise positioning of toric IOLs. In my experience with the TrueLine IOL, sizing the capsulotomy between 5.5 to 6 millimeters produces the most stable refractive results. I then used the Stellaris phaco emulsification unit to remove the cataract through a 1.8 millimeter mix incision. Many surgeons have now moved towards mix, and I believe the approach will continue to gain popularity because the smaller surgical wounds result in less surgically induced astigmatism and fewer complications. Cortical cleanup with irrigation and aspiration and capsule polishing is a crucial step since any remaining cortical material or lens epithelial cells can lead to fibrosis and posterior capsular opacification, or PCO. Meticulous cortical cleanup is crucial to reduce the likelihood of PCO and peripheral fibrosis, which helps ensure the successful performance of premium lenses. After filling the capsular bag with the viscoelastic again, I am now using the Whitman Shepard capsule polisher to get the underside of the anterior capsule leaflet as clean as possible. I believe this is a very important step to avoid capsule contraction and maintain good positioning and movement of the lens over time. You can see as I do this, first 180 degrees in one direction and 180 degrees in the other direction, I always get some of the extra cellular debris off. Here I have widened the incision to about 2.6 to 2.8 millimeters and injected the lens using the crystal cert injector. This can be done in one single motion. Then I like to spin the IOL at least 180 and sometimes 360 degrees to make sure it's free inside the capsular bag and also to knock off any remaining cortical material or lens epithelial cells. I leave the lens aligned with my previously marked toric alignment marks. You can see the circular marks inside each hinge area which makes the lens easy to align. I make sure to remove all viscoelastic under and over the lens, adjust the lens position a final time, hydrate my wound incisions, and we're finished. In this patient's case, postoperative inflammation control is especially important considering the patient's young age and the choice of a premium IOL. The patient was placed on once daily Prolenza, Bromfenac Ophthalmic Solution, 0.07%, a topical ophthalmic non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, or NSAID, and on Lodomax, Lodopredinol Atabinate Ophthalmic Gel, 
0.5%, four times daily, following surgery to control inflammation and pain. Lodopredinol atabinate is an effective corticosteroid with an established safety profile, and the Lodomax gel formulation offers consistency of dosing compared to its suspension formulation and is engineered for ocular surface residence time. Recovery with minimal pain and inflammation is an important aspect of the patient's experience. When patients have paid out of pocket for a premium IOL, and when I have invested time and energy to create a premium surgical experience, we both want the premium experience to carry over into the postoperative period. I use Lodomax gel because I trust it to reduce pain and inflammation. At the last visit, this patient's uncorrected visual acuity was 2020 minus 1 J2 in the dominant eye. She expressed satisfaction with the procedure and with her vision during a variety of activities. As this case illustrates, achieving success with a premium IOL requires thoughtful assessment and patient counseling, careful surgical preparation and technique, and finally, effective postoperative inflammation control. Indication. Lodomax gel is a corticosteroid indicated for the treatment of postoperative inflammation and pain following ocular surgery. Important risk information about Lodomax gel. Lodomax gel is contraindicated in most viral diseases of the cornea and conjunctiva, including epithelial herpes simplex keratitis, dendritic keratitis, vaccinia and varicella, and also in mycobacterial infection of the eye and fungal diseases of ocular structures. Intraocular pressure, IOP, increase. Prolonged use of corticosteroids may result in glaucoma with damage to the optic nerve, defects in visual acuity, and fields of vision. If this product is used for 10 days or longer, IOP should be monitored. Cataracts. Use of corticosteroids may result in posterior subcapsular cataract formation. Delayed healing. Use of steroids after cataract surgery may delay healing and increase the incidence of bleb formation and occurrence of perforations in those with diseases causing corneal and scleral thinning. The initial prescription and renewal of the medication order should be made by a physician only after examination of the patient with the aid of magnification. Bacterial infections. Prolonged use of corticosteroids may suppress the host response and thus increase the hazard of secondary ocular infection. In acute purulent conditions, steroids may mask infection or enhance existing infections. Viral infections. Use of corticosteroid medication in the treatment of patients with a history of herpes simplex requires great caution. Use of ocular steroids may prolong the course and exacerbate the severity of many viral infections of the eye, including herpes simplex. Fungal infections. Fungal infections of the cornea are particularly prone to develop coincidentally with long-term local steroid application. Fungus invasion may be considered in any persistent corneal ulceration where a steroid has been used or is used. Contact lens wear. Patients should not wear contact lenses when using Lodomax gel. The most common ocular adverse drug reactions were anterior chamber inflammation, 5%, eye pain, 2%, and foreign body sensation, 2%. Important risk information about Prolenza. Indications and usage. Prolenza, Bromfenac Ophthalmic Solution 0.07%, is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, NSAID, indicated for the treatment of postoperative inflammation and reduction of ocular pain in patients who have undergone cataract surgery. Dosage and administration. Instill one drop into the affected eye once daily beginning one day prior to surgery, continued on the day of surgery, and through the first 14 days post-surgery. Warnings and precautions. Sulfite allergic reactions. Prolenza contains sodium sulfite, which may cause allergic-type reactions, including anaphylactic shock symptoms and life-threatening or less severe asthmatic episodes in certain susceptible people. The overall prevalence of sulfite sensitivity in the general population is unknown and probably low. Sulfite sensitivity is seen more frequently in asthmatic than in non-asthmatic people. Slow or delayed healing. All topical NSAIDs may slow or delay healing. Topical corticosteroids are also known to slow or delay healing. Concomitant use of topical NSAIDs and topical steroids may increase the potential for healing problems. Potential for cross-sensitivity. Caution should be used when treating individuals who have previously exhibited sensitivity to acetyl salicylic acid, phenylacetic acid derivatives, and other NSAIDs. Increased bleeding time. There have been reports that ocularly applied NSAIDs may cause increased bleeding of ocular tissues, including hyphemas, in conjunction with ocular surgery. Use Prolenza with caution in patients with known bleeding tendencies or who are receiving other medications that may prolong bleeding time. 
Keratitis and corneal reactions. Use of topical NSAIDs may result in keratitis. Patients with evidence of corneal epithelial breakdown should immediately discontinue use of topical NSAIDs and should be closely monitored for corneal health. Patients with complicated ocular surgeries, corneal denervation, corneal epithelial defects, diabetes mellitus, ocular surface diseases such as dry eye disease, rheumatoid arthritis, or repeat ocular surgeries within a short period of time may be at increased risk for corneal adverse events, which may become site-threatening. Post-marketing experience suggests that use of topical NSAIDs more than 24 hours prior to surgery or use 14 days post-surgery may increase a patient's risk for the occurrence and severity of corneal adverse events. Topical NSAIDs should be used with caution in these patients. Contact lens wear. Prolenza should not be instilled while wearing contact lenses. Lenses may be inserted 10 minutes following administration of Prolenza. Adverse reactions. The most commonly reported adverse reactions in 3 to 8% of patients were anterior chamber inflammation, foreign body sensation, eye pain, photophobia, and blurred vision.